Hello, my name is Mark Payne. I'm from the Danish Technical University in Copenhagen in Denmark. I'm going to be talking to you today about the work that we've been doing within the Horizon 2020 project, Blue Action, to develop and value climate services. And I'm leading this work package within Blue Action uh, together with Catherine Steffen from the Institute for Advanced Sustainability Studies in Potsdam. And when you look at this title, the first thing that probably strikes you and the first question you probably have is what exactly is a climate service? And there are many, many different, different definitions of a climate service, and you can essentially choose your own if, if you like. The one that we're working with, the one that we feel is very easy to understand and is very intuitive, comes from a researcher in Barcelona called Paco Dobbles Reyes, who says quite simply that climate data is not climate information. What does he mean by this? We well, can imagine a situation where you have a set of stakeholders. Maybe it's a ski field, maybe it's a, a fishing vessel or a fish processing plant, maybe it's a public health authority. And they want to know what climate change and climate variability will mean for the future of their business and the decisions that they have to make. So they take these questions and they take them to the scientific community and pose them. And the answers that they get back typically come in terms of variables such as temperature, and on large global scales. And of course, you can imagine that if we're thinking about a ski field, for example, there's a mismatch between the local information that they need and the global resolution of a climate model. And similarly, we all know that fish don't eat temperature, for example. So there's a need, there's essentially a mismatch between the data that the community can deliver and the information required to make decisions. This is what a climate service does. It bridges this gap and translates the data into information that's useful for decision making. Within Blue Action, we are developing case studies in five different sectors. We're looking at tourism, shipping, heat waves, fisheries, and Arctic development scenarios. And I'm going to run you briefly through these scenarios now. For each of the scenarios, they're set up essentially as a collaboration between an academic partner and a potential end user that's directly involved in the, um, in the project. So in the case of the, the first case study here, which is looking at climate data for uh, ski fields and tourism in, in northern Finland, we have an academic partner from the University of Lapland and a, a small and medium enterprise in the form of, of this ski field known as Rukka. And in particular, what they're interested in doing is trying to develop and understand how seasonal forecast information can be used in the planning of their snowmaking activities and in the planning of their stor snow storage activities. The second example that we have is that of temperature-related human mortality. And this is work being led by Joan Ballister at IS Global, um, where they're working together with uh, the city of Almeida, which is outside, uh, just outside Lisbon, in Portugal, and a collection of public health authorities spread throughout Europe. And what they're very interested in is the idea of forecasting essentially this type of event, heat, wave, heat waves like the one that we had this summer here in Europe. And the reason that this is uh, very important is that these heat waves lead to large increases in human mortality um, due to the associated heat stress. And so the idea of this case study is to develop both an early warning and forecast system that can be used by public health authorities to prepare adaptation measures in advance of a potential heat wave. The third case study is looking at polar lows. And we have here an example of a polar low. This is, these are uh, small but extremely intense um, and extremely strong storms that pop up rapidly in high latitudes and can essentially disappear again within 36 hours. And they present a tremendous risk both to land-based um, communities, but also in, in particular to shipping. Um, and they've led to uh, losses of many lives over the years. And so this is work being led by Martin King at Uni Research in, in Bergen, uh, up here, together with DNVGL, which is a shipping insurance and risk assessment company. And the idea of their case study is to try and develop a, a monthly prediction system for a, the probabilistic conditions where po that lead to polar low formation. So not, not so much the actual presence of a storm, but the probability of the conditions that, that lead to storms. 
And the idea is that this can be used in shipping risk assessment tools to plan your activities in the Arctic, and it will be incorporated directly into the tool that DNVGL has already. The fourth case study is work that I'm doing myself, looking at climate services for marine fisheries. Um, so this is based in DTU here in Denmark. And the collaborators that we have are from the Dutch Pelagic Freezer Trawler Association and the Danish Pelagic Producers Asso Association. And what we're interested in doing with this case study is to develop forecasts of the distribution, the timing, and the abundance of key fish in fisheries. And one of the target species we're looking at is shown here. This is bluefin tuna. The fifth case study is looking at scenario development, and in particular, the idea of sustainable development in the Yamal Autonomous Region. This is a, a region on the north coast of Russia, and this work has been led by Catherine Steffen at AASS in Potsdam, together with a group from uh, Moscow, and Foresight Intelligence, which is a small SME that specialises in scenario development. And the idea of this is to take uh, climate data, but not just climate data, also socioeconomic data, political scenarios, and combine these all into a development um, scenario for the Yamal region out to around 2040. So those are the five case studies. To give you some of the highlights of what we've achieved so far in the first two years, uh, particularly the, the Yamal Autonomous Region case study in the, the Russian Arctic has made very good progress and they've had a series of three workshops where they've essentially brought local communities and stakeholders from many, many different sectors together with the climate scientists of Blue Action to develop these scenarios. And we have here a, a picture from one of these workshops where you can see that they're in the process of brainstorming and developing all the potential ideas that could happen in the future. And so this work has made very good progress. They've had three workshops, as I mentioned. And the scenarios are essentially finished, and we expect them to be published this year. The second example uh, is the fisheries case study, and looking at climate services for marine fisheries. And we have five climate service products online at the moment. This is perhaps the most exciting one of them. This is the first we got, on, we got online, uh, looking at the spatial distribution of blue whiting, which is a small mesopelagic fish shown down here. And the forecast is a forecast of the distribution, shown here in uh, the colours in the background. And so we've actually been through a, a full, full forecast cycle now with this particular product, where we've made a forecast, users have taken it, um, and then gone out and gone fishing to see what they actually get and how it compares. And so this is the evaluation, and the points uh, that we see here are the abundance and the density of fish that was actually observed in 2018 compared to the forecast for 2018, which is shown as the coloured background. And we can see we have quite good agreement here, and we believe that this is the, the first example of a, a forecast product for fisheries in Europe, and one that we believe is quite successful. So we're continuing with this into the future. The future of the project and of Blue Action in the next uh, two years will obviously be focused on developing these climate services in more detail. But one other aspect that we have that I think is very exciting and very challenging is the idea of valuing and valuation. In particular, we want to answer the question, are the climate services that we develop both useful to the end users and are they valuable for the end users? And we actually want to try and express the value of these climate services in economic terms if we possibly can. We're interested in particular in whether they outperform the current decision-making approaches that are being used and whether they can therefore add value by improving these decision-making processes. And from a wider, an even wider point of view, we'd also like to address the question of whether the model improvements and the rest of the work that's been done in the Blue Action Project can also improve the climate services that we're developing. And does this actually therefore lead to a further increase in the value of these products. So with that, I'll uh, sum up. Uh, Blue Action Work Package 5 is, a, is looking at developing and valuing climate services. We have five different case studies across a wide variety of sectors and a wide variety of timescales. 
Uh, we have a combination of both academic research institutes together with small and medium enterprises directly involved in the consortium who will be using these climate services. Um, and we hope to try and be able to both quantify the value and the usefulness of these climate services at the end of the day. So with that, I thank you for your attention.